Thanks so much for coming to the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance Liberty Dinner at the location of the original Liberty Dinner here in 2004. So, welcome back to the most important, the most important location. Again, I'm Mark Edge, and I think that the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is the most important organization that I'm involved with. I feel like what we're doing here in New Hampshire, it's groundbreaking. It isn't being done anywhere in the world. There's no place where you've got liberty-oriented people telling the reps how to vote, rating, um, rating the laws as they come through, many of the laws, probably most of the laws get, uh, get some kind of rating, and then the reps are advised how to vote on these, uh, these bills. And then at the end of the year, which of course we're going to premiere here, we have the, uh, the Liberty Rating. No place in the world is this being done. And this kind of work is, it's really, it's because of the folks here in this room, uh, the board members, the, the legislators, the bill reviewers. You guys are what's really making the difference here in New Hampshire, the reason I moved so long ago. And I really want to thank uh, the New Hampshire Public Radio for taking a real small snippet of uh, my uh, last year's speech. And I'd like to, you know, I've got an opportunity to, to get a rebuttal here. So, so NHPR said, rightly so, that I uh, quoted me, and not to quote, but the, played the audio, where I claim that there, a libertarian veto exists here in New Hampshire. I'd like to point out vetoes can be overridden. <laughs> this happened by a small margin with a couple of bills this year. The, uh, the Granite Hammer bill. Um, yeah. Every two years we get another shot, okay? Gotta keep trying, keep plugging along. And that's what really I want the message to be here tonight is, is that, um, you know, it's step by step. We've really changed the narrative here in New Hampshire. Instead of it being the standard old Republican and Democrat argument like it's going on in 49 other states in Washington, D.C., here we've drawn different lines. We've drawn the lines between statist and liberty-minded folks. And I think that at least we know what the battle lines are. They don't. Um, they're all over the map. Uh, you know, they, uh, obviously any given rep who's out there has got a D rating. They're going to vote liberty oriented on some things and they're going to disagree with other reps. They're going to vote that way. So they're, 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 li they're battle lines. And I'm a pacifist, mind you. I hate using these uh, kind of terminologies, but it's the best analogies I can come up with. Um, they're all over the map. They just don't know. Um, I don't want to make it seem like it's any kind of resounding victory this year. There's a lot to be done, but we have had a great deal of success. I want to remind you, every vote matters. So, you know, we may have lost by one vote in a couple of uh, bills. Those things can be redone. Uh, Jim McConnell, Jim, is Jim here? Jim from McConnell from Cheshire, uh, Cheshire 3. He won by three votes. Mark McConkie from Carroll County won by 23. Tim O'Flaherty lost in Manchester by 26 votes. These are small margins and places where we can really make a difference. Ron Simino uh, from Nashua, 35 votes. During this session, we, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, have helped to secure and expand gun rights, prevent the militarization of the police, prevent the proliferation of occupational licensing, reduce penalties for nonviolent drug offenses, work against unemployment inducing increases in the minimum wage. It's kind of a qualified statement, but state civil asset forfeiture has been eliminated. And hopefully federal civil asset forfeiture will be eliminated in coming in the near future. Um, expansion and education choices. I think it's worth pointing out in the, uh, the Croydon case, so we got very, very close, and that governor's gone. We're sitting there, we're sitting there to where they, all the bad politicians go. Washington, D.C. No, maybe not. Maybe she just can go back home. So politics is a game. It's an ugly game.
And it's a game that may have been rigged up to this point by the uh, government lovers over the decades. But if you look at it, we've achieved more in a short period of time than anyone else. And it's because of our heroes out here, the liberty-oriented reps, the bill reviewers, the board members of the NHLA. What you can do is you can help by campaigning for them. They can't do everything, you know, and it's, it's hard to keep up the momentum. Campaigning, calling your reps, reviewing bills. There's people who are reviewing bills all over America. We can do a little bit here. And, uh, excuse me, uh, donating to campaigns. Obviously, that's the most important thing that I'm going to be talking about here. I personally don't know every liberty-oriented person who's uh, running in the state. That's why I donate to the NHLA. I want to give to the PAC, and you can, there's little sheets right there on your, your table um, in order to, that's it. You specifically mark PAC, and then we can use that money to send to uh, people who are you know, campaigning across the state in order to make New Hampshire a better place to live. For me, it's just a lot easier to give to the NHLA, and then they can distribute it because they're doing the research. With your help, we will do better every year, year upon year, and we'll do more and more. This room is more full than it has been years past, and it's gonna get more and more full with people who are active in the NHLA. Please, get active and donate. Coming up, it's Paul, who's gonna be um, announcing the Activist of the Year Award. Come on, Paul. I want to echo what Mark said. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here tonight. It's great to see so many wonderful people. Uh, just every time I turn around, I see a new uh, face that's just an incredible uh, person who I admire. And uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, this year's Activist of the Year uh, is the inventor and developer of a software called Gencorp Mobile. This is a software that tracks New Hampshire legislation and legislators. Uh, it has been developed and is being maintained and continually being improved on a completely voluntary basis. And it has been, uh, the inventor of the software has given access for free to NHLA endorsed legislatures, uh, legislators and candidates uh, and members, as well as other liberty activists. Uh, he has also been campaigning for years uh, for campaigns uh, for liberty candidates across the state, and is himself running uh, for the second time for the state legislature. <laughs> From Barrington, New Hampshire, please join me in showing your appreciation for Seamus Casey. the board for this incredible honor. I, I truly appreciate the value of this. I guess I'd like to say if, uh, I had a loss of words here. <laughs> I'd like to thank a few people who've uh, guided me towards this. For sure, uh, one who's not here, I wish he was, Kevin Bloom, I consider him a mentor for uh, liberty activism. He showed me the ropes for getting, you know, getting involved, and I, I, I always will value that. Um, early on, when I first started working on this application, I spoke with a few people, a couple of which were Mark Warden. Thank you very much for feedback you gave me. Amanda Bolden was one of the first users and one of the most enthusiastic supporters, and thank you for that. And on uh, a couple other levels, uh, technical level, Emily Sandblade has provided some of the most amazing ideas, and a lot of which, a lot of what is in there came from her. I have to acknowledge that. Marav, 
she's not here, she's not with us tonight, but she was um, huge in making other people know that this thing exists, and I, I can't thank her enough for that. And I know I'm forgetting people, but <laughs> I'm sorry for that, but thank you, thank you very much. If you haven't had a chance to uh, come up and check out the uh, silent auction, please do. It's going to be the last call here. Also, the 50-50 rack raffle, Melissa, uh, last chance to get your tickets for the 50-50 raffle. Yep, there you go, right there. I'd like to call uh, Jeff Creed to the podium, if you would, please. Okay. <laughs> So I'm up here today uh, right now to talk about uh, the award for the perfect voting record. Um, oh, sorry. For the award for the uh, perfect voting record. Um, now, we, as a lot of people know who've been here before, we give awards for perfect voting records, we give awards for legislative year. And right now, I'm talking about just the person who basically did the best at matching the votes that we um, put out in the gold standard each week. In 1765, Sam Adams and the Sons of Liberty, they were at the you know, Green Dragon Tavern in Boston, and they kind of hatched some ideas that ended up leading to the American Revolution. And last year in Nashua, Paul and I and a couple other people were talking about the way we do um, the ratings for candidates <coughs> to the NHLA, and decided we wanted to make a change to the way we've done the Liberty rating. So we've been doing Liberty ratings since 2004, and based upon primarily or only the, uh, the voting that the reps do. Um, but the problem is what we saw sometimes happen was that there were reps who would introduce some pretty bad bills, um, but vote pretty well, at least in the, in the votes where there were roll call votes, and they could actually do pretty well in the liberty rating. So that was seen as some of a problem. Um, you also would see reps who would actually submit a lot of really good legislation and do a lot of hard work before the voting happened to actually research uh, the law, decide what needed to happen, and they weren't really getting the, the credit they deserved for the work they did in sponsoring good legislation. <clears throat> so this year's Liberty rating, we decided to make a change. Uh, we still use the voting, you know, the voting actually matters quite a bit because that's what passes legislation and makes it fail, but we added a sponsorship modifier that adds the Liberty score uh, either up or down depending on whether or not you sponsored or co-sponsored pro-Liberty or anti-Liberty legislation. Um, so with that said, what I'm going to talk about now is the is the person who had the best voting score only. Um, and that's not going to leak any information about who might be the uh, legislator of the year, since this is really just based upon votes at this point. Um, the person who got the perfect score this year, it's actually, you know, it's pretty hard to get a perfect score. First of all, you know, there's a lot of bills. Um, but if you're out sick one day, or you have a, another thing that's going on in your life that matters, um, you know, even the best legislators miss votes. This person didn't miss any votes. In 2014, there were no people who actually got a, a perfect score. In 2015, um, of the 50 scored votes, there were seven reps with perfect scores. This year, we had 98 scored votes and only one rep with a perfect voting score, and he actually had the third highest grade overall. So this year, there is only one. There can be only one. So I called this. <laughs> I called the podium the Highlander, the Honorable Mr. John Burke. Speechless. <laughs> yes, my wife will say that's the first time. Yeah. I, I don't know how to say thank you. Um, I, I'm just. Yeah. yeah, whenever I go to the podium, I don't know if you've ever seen it, um, I am noticed uh, for this. And it was fun, funny because at the end of the year, there was other reps that were trying to copy me. <laughs> and whenever I go up there, I always say, thank you. 
Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and so it was just funny when I saw the reps going up going, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and even the Speaker chimed in once and said, no, you got to do better than that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just beyond words here that, you know, I'm the only one that got the perfect score. I just can't believe it. Um, I guess I'm very happy that the NHLA agreed with the way I vote. <laughs> Because really, the paper they give me every Wednesday really helps because I look at it and just like the HRA, the Health Republican Alliance, I look at that paper. Uh, leadership gives that white paper. I never picked that thing up. <laughs> I've never seen one. <laughs> and, and it's just incredible the work that they must do to put this on. You know, every week, you know, Paul's up there passing these papers out and it's a lot of work and now I don't know if Eileen's here this year oh she's not well I, I did miss Eileen this year because she gave great hugs and, and I'll be honest you know there's times I need a hug before I go in there <laughs> But, but again, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, this is, is a huge honor for me to get this. And, uh, you know, last year I got perfect attendance or perfect uh, score. And uh, I've been there six years. I got perfect attendance. I've been there for every vote. And I am doing one more term. And I, I do have to get that. Thank you. Seamus, John, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. I feel like they represent all the hard work that so many people in this room and folks that couldn't make it have done here for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, for Liberty in New Hampshire. I feel like we're gonna make this a, a better place. And one of those people that's helping to, make, to do this, Keith Ammon. Some of my favorite people are, are in this room. The, the John Burt uh, Society. Got me a little choked up, John. So, we're, but we're here together because we care about liberty. It's such an important concept. And uh, it's something that's being lost in the world. It really is. And it's so hard, you know, there's different crises that happen uh, throughout the country. And we're, we're experiencing things now with uh, police uh, in different parts of the country. And it seems like liberty is a luxury to most people. That when there's a crisis, you can suspend it, throw it out the window. Um, but the people in this room know that it's not a luxury. It's something that we can, uh, we have, a, we have a steady, clear mind about what it is. And we don't waver when it comes to other things that, that happen around us. Like, we're, we're very clear-headed about what liberty is. And liberty is really just allowing people to live their lives the way that, they're, that they're, they were born to live their lives. Um, and, and so I really I, I appreciate everyone in this room. I'm sorry I'm getting choked up. I'm going to stop that. So I'm going to go on for a few minutes here. I'm going to give you just a brief look back over uh, the last uh, last uh, year in the legislature. And I'm, I'm the political director of the NHLA, but I'm also a current state rep. I'm finishing my freshman year. Thank you. I'm messing up the mic here. I, I want to say thank you to Susan. She, 
she's the, the real hero. She she makes sure my tie's on straight and my, <laughs> I get out the door on time. So I just want to give you a brief look back over this last year, uh, 2016. We had over a thousand bills come through the house. 330 became law, and 13 were vetoed by the governor. So it's a lot of a lot of bills come through the state house. Um, two things that we need up there. We need we need a better speaker. Sean Jasper needs to go. And we need a better governor. And, and I won't give away anything, but we might have someone in mind. You didn't hear that from me, that was supposed to be later on in the program. So the theme of this 2016 legislator session was the opioid crisis. And kind of tacked on to the tail of that was Medicaid expansion. So those two things were really the major issues. You know, in a biennium, the first year is a budget year. So there are a lot of issues about the budget. And the second year, there's other things that happen. But if you want to see how a crisis, you know, Rahm Emanuel said never let a crisis go to waste. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's, it's in the playbook of, of politicians. They get out in front and they use the crisis to kind of further their own political career. Um, and I think most of us in this room, you know, see through that. We see that uh, we, we don't want to suspend liberty in times of crisis. That's the, that's the time to preserve it. And so, the, you know, the drug war, we understand the drug war undermines civil liberties like nothing else in this country does. So, um, of the 13 bills vetoed by the governor, there was a bill to relax restrictions on fireworks. Um, I was surprised to hear there's restrictions on fireworks in New Hampshire. <laughs> but uh, that bill got vetoed. There was the Croydon bill that got vetoed. <laughs> and school choice is one of the number one issues. It, um, where do people learn that government is the answer to everything? After school. Yeah. Well, they learn it from somewhere, right? Um, if, you, if we want to continue this slide towards uh, Sovietization of this country, keep public school in place without any competition. Because that's, that's where, where it will get us. So school choice, and thank you Jody for all that you do. And we also had Vermont style constitutional carry was vetoed by the government. Oh. All right, so that was, that's looking back. We didn't have a whole lot of successes. You know, we had a little rollback on civil asset forfeiture. That was a good thing. Um, but for the most part, the bills that got signed into law are, you know, statists' uh, way of thinking. So we have our challenges ahead of us. So now let's go to the present. Um, I just want to say that this freshman, re I'm a freshman, and it's so cool to be up at the State House with other freshmen. Um, I think we have a really good class of people that are, you know, can I ask the freshman to stand up? I, I hate when a speaker asks me to stand up. But... <laughs> and so, uh, we have a tradition kind of, we, uh, some of us in the freshman class, we go across the street to uh, Tandy's Top Shelf and we lick our wounds after getting beaten all day. But it, it's so cool to have uh, other people to share the experience with. And then we have older, more experienced state reps. Could we have those people that served at least one, one term, the really old ones. This is not a, uh, a short fight. This is going to take some time. And the key is to get experienced people that understand how it works in the State House. Uh, you know, as a freshman, I didn't know what was going on. 
Um, you know, I kind of barely have my head around it now, but we need people that are going to serve several terms up there so that we get, you know, it, it's about a one-third turnover every year of the 400 state reps. So it doesn't take too long to become a senior person up there. And uh, so I, I really enjoy and appreciate, uh, I sit next to Carol in the house. Yeah! And I got, I got the moment to draw. Um, out of 400 seats, you know, I got to sit next to Carol, and I'm always asking her, hey, why did they do that? Why did they do that? So, a lot of knowledge transfer there. I really appreciate it. So, uh, the, the NHLA is, uh, has gone through the list of incumbents and uh, candidates, and we've, uh, we're going to endorse 111 state representatives. So, a little bit about the process, and you'll find out who those people are soon. Um, so let, let me just go through the list here. 111 state reps, 10 senators, senator candidates, and one governor. So we're going to endorse those. So just a little bit about the endorsement process. Um, if you're an incumbent, you had to score a B plus or better both years that you served in the, in the House. And, um, someone once told me, I think it might have been JR, that the bees are the most dangerous because, uh, you know, the straight bees. Because they're with you a lot of the time, but sometimes they, they cave on serious issues. So we went a little bit above B, B plus both years. And then we have a survey that went out. If you are a, uh, just a new candidate, you don't have a record, we don't know exactly where you stand, uh, you had to have an 85% score on the survey. So that's where those 111 come from. And that's a pretty good number. Um, Jeff already explained how we had that, added that component, the modifier, to the, uh, the Liberty rating based on sponsorship. So that's, a, that's an interesting thing that's happening this year. So now we'll look ahead just briefly. Um, we're going to have a leadership vacuum in the State House, I think. You know, we're going to really need those experienced reps to step up and give us some guidance on how to, you know, things happen fast when you're on the floor of the State House. Um, and I think Tammy and I were just talking about this earlier that, you know, if you're not experienced, things happen and they whiz by you and then you think, oh, I should have done that. And it's the people that have the instincts to get on down to the floor, down to the well to speak and to make the, the right motion at the right time. That's really where that, those critical leverage points happen. And uh, it takes experience and it takes, uh, you know, practice. So um, we're going to have some some liberty-minded state reps, uh, Dan McGuire is one of them, who aren't able to, to keep going, and that's understandable. But we're gonna lose some of that knowledge, so we need to replace it. And so <clears throat> we'll be working on that this year. Um, we need to organize a little better. Talking to my fellow state reps, assuming that we're all winning it. We need to organize a little better. Uh, we need some pre-planning, we need some communication ahead of time, you know. Um, and, and there's other organizations in the state house that might we might be able to align with. You know, this is the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Alliance means we can reach out to other organizations that might uh, have some uh, crossover. So we're going to need to do that, um, and we're going to need to get behind a speaker candidate. We can't be divided on that. We got to vote as a block on a, on replacing the current speaker. So I think Mark had gone through this list. Uh, we're going to continue. The NHLA is going to continue to support Second Amendment rights, parental rights, school choice, drug war reform, including uh, more reform on civil asset forfeiture, militarization of the police. They just blew up a person with a bomb. They just blew up a suspect with a bomb. That's never happened before in U.S. law. You know, these, these are the kinds of things that we need to have a, a conversation about. Um, more limited, transparent, and accountable government, and that means fighting against taxes and fee increases. Because we know that's, the people own their own money, the government doesn't own their money. And a really big one is right to work. If our state can become right to work, we can have so much more prosperity here in the state if we focus on that issue. So, without further ado, I'm going to give you a little lead up. My, my job here is to introduce the Legislator of the Year. 
so I'll give you a little, I'll give you some hints. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? Uh, he grew up in New Jersey. So anyone here grew up in New Jersey? <laughs> he went to a certain institute of technology. He competed, or after completing engineering graduate school, he moved to Deering and to work volunteering for a non-profit drug and alcohol rehab organization. And while working there, he met his wife, Charlene. They've been married since 1997 and have four children ranging from six to 15. And so these are my personal thoughts. Um, this person is high energy and they're even healed. Uh, I, I never sense discouragement uh, when it's an uphill battle from this person. Um, they're experienced and smart, and they know legislative judo. <laughs> this person really does. And it's someone I personally look up to and will rely on for guidance and expertise in the next session. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Legislator of the Year, J.R. Hull. I guess I want to thank my wife and my children. Um, without their help um, and their effort and their time, I wouldn't be here. Um, be it them missing me at evenings or out on the campaign trail or answering phone calls or seeing hateful letters in the paper. Um, to which some of them, my wife in particular, wanted to respond, but that's not true, that's not true. And yes, I know, but unfortunately some people want to attack others, um, and that's unfortunate. Um, thank you, Keith. Those were very kind words. Um, I, I do want to thank, um, I think the longest term, the longest serving member in the House is here. His name is Representative Jan Itza, and he's been my mentor, and I think he deserves a round of applause. Most of what I know I've learned from him and, and, and former Speaker O'Brien and a couple of others in terms of how to win debates on the floor and how to, um, how to change the dynamics in the House on the floor on the spot when you're down to a, um, a couple votes may, may pass something or kill something and you need to, to kill a bill that is going the wrong direction. Um, I also want to thank um, a member who was, who was there my freshman year um, who we, I often got confused with and vice versa. Um, I didn't know Mark Warden before I ran. I got to meet him on the in freshman year. And normally, a lot of members consider, confused the two of us because we were both tall and thin and whatever else, <laughs> light colored hair. And someone would come up to me and say, but I, I was working on your bill. I'm thinking, that's not my bill. <laughs> and vice versa. Um, Mark has been an inspiration to me personally because along the way, there's been a number of times where he stood up and been very consistent about delivering a pro-liberty message. My children are homeschooled, not because I need to incur the extra cost, not because I, I want to give up my wife having a career. Um, it's because education matters, clearly, clearly matters, and my children matter, and their long-term economic prosperity is to fully dependent upon the education they receive. And I'm not sure I like the current bias in some of the public school systems. And it's, it's quite simply that reason, and that reason alone, that I want my kids to have the best possible education. Now, that doesn't work for everybody. I understand it. Um, but it does work for some. And for those of us who want to give other options to other families, it really comes down to any form of school choice. Thank you, Jody, for shepherding the fight on, on Croydon. Um, we're getting there. Oh. 
And I want to thank everybody who shows up and puts in time. I mean, we're slowly taking back the house. Over 10 years ago, I was in the National Fish and Game Clubhouse seeing a campaign lecture or a campaign training class on politics. And the person who taught that class was connected to right to work, but it doesn't matter why they taught it and what, what the subject matter was. It was more about firearms on that particular class. But he had two pictures in a slide, okay? And one was about how legislation and how policies are derived in America, okay? And there was pictures of newspapers and people serving at the state house, right? And pens. And that's how we affect our government. And then the second slide was what the pictures we see of ISIS in the far country, right? Where they do it at the end of a gun. And violence isn't the answer. And that's not how I want America to be either. I don't want, be it any foreign government or any other government, to use the threat of force to force, force policies through. Our crafters of the Constitution did a wonderful job. And they created a form of government that allows people to have a say without it being under the threat of violence, and that's a good thing. So with that, thank you. Thank you, JR. Could I have all the former legislators of the year uh, please stand up real quick? Uh, Mark Warden, Carol, Dan, I say the whole name. Carol McGuire, the way you give your votes and your campaign contributions. Mark Warden, Dan Itza. Mark, you're running again this year, right? Thank you so much. The 50-50 and the silent auction are closed. Yeah, yeah, I told you it was coming. I warned you. <laughs> I'd like to call up, uh, oh, real quick, I wanted to ask a real quick question. What's the difference between organized crime and the government? The government, or excuse me, organized crime doesn't have a 13 year indoctrination day prison on their side. <laughs> Our son is homeschooled too. You guys are protecting my family. Thank you. 75% of our tax bill goes to support a school that my son doesn't go to. And I think it's reasonable to say that that money is essentially being taken from his education. There are people in my town that are stealing money from my kid to send other people's kids to school. I've been by that school. It's not because those people are poor. There's some real nice cars that pull in and out of there every day. <laughs> Jeff, Paul, please come up. The Liberty Radio. All right, so just one more thing, quick delay here before we talk about the Liberty Radio, which is going to start getting passed out here in one second. Um, Liberty Rating all starts with bill reviews, and I'd like to have, because people need to stand up some more here, I'd like to have uh, people who did any bill reviews this year, please stand up to be recognized. We have 37 people contributing to bill reviews this year, and I'm going to say thank you to all of them. They triage the bills, they do the initial research, and they come up with the draft content that goes into the gold standard. So we, we can actually start hanging those out now, and that way you can like, not listen to anything else I'm saying. <laughs> start looking up your own, own scores. Um, but while we're hanging those out, you can go ahead. Um, I'd like to recognize first uh, Daryl W. Perry as one of our lead bill review contributors. <laughs> also, Jason Sorens, please come up. Mike Sylvia and James Stein. And yes, James, you have to come up. <laughs> All right, thank you. So the, they, you know, they, they do the bulk of the work. That you know, find those bills early and find the things we need to start attacking is really important, and uh, they really help a lot with that. All the uh, bill reviews actually end up contributing eventually to the gold standard, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Uh, there's actually a much smaller group than the bill review group. Sorry. Go ahead. 
much smaller group than the Bill Review Group who actually gets together every week when the calendar comes out and actually starts putting together the gold standards. We use the data in the Bill Reviews, but we also kind of go through again, take one more look at the, the output from the committee hearings and the bills themselves. Um, we generally have less than a week to go through, select the bills we're going to put on there, and complete the research and put together the gold standard. Um, Again, there are many people who contributed to the gold standard. Uh, many of them here tonight, but today we're going to recognize the people who actually contributed uh, the most to the gold standard this year around. Um, first is uh, Will Anderson. Will, come on up. So every week I'm a little bit panicked. You know, we're up there, we're working in the middle of the night, and everyone's working Friday and the gold standard. I'm like, gee, I hope someone's going to actually go and distribute the gold standard this week. And, and week after week, uh, Will is there to volunteer to distribute them and making sure that the hard work we do actually matters. Right, we've got Michelle LaBelle here. Michelle, come on. Michelle helps out every week as well, uh, particularly focusing on the uh, education bills and the uh, second amendment related bills, but certainly all of them. Uh, Doris Owensy. Outstanding. And Doris helps uh, every week again for particular focus on education topics. And uh, James Stein, hope you didn't sit down already. Uh, James is actually especially. Uh, this year, in the early part of the year, he helped uh, on a couple of the really bad weeks when there were a lot of bills and helped me get to sleep by like 2.30 in the morning. It was actually really great. So thank you, James Stein. So I'm sure by now, uh, these are kind of going in the room and so people are not looking up here looking for your own names and, and these things. Just a couple of quick things you'll see on the front, uh, as was already sort of uh, foretold in the, in the prophecies. Uh, Frank Edelbrot has uh, been endorsed for governor. I'm going to go through and read uh, all your names. And I think that's about it. Actually, you know what? One last thing I want to do is, I'm not sure this got done earlier, um, was uh, I wanted to recognize uh, Dave and Christine Butler for putting together tonight's uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. If the bills don't get reviewed, we don't have a liberty rating. We don't have a liberty rating. The Liberty Alliance has no purpose. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to be passing it out now. I'd like to remind you that the uh, the life membership. This is a, I guess, a savings opportunity for you guys. The life membership is going to be going up. It's ridiculously low at hundred dollars right now. If you want to be a life member. Now's the time to fork over your hundred bucks and uh, become one. The envelopes are right on the table. Check NHLA and fill out name and last name and address and all those sorts of things. And we can use it specifically for uh, funding of, of rep campaigns and these sorts of things. I, I think they're still passing it out. Well, I think we've hit all the tables that that's why I just wanted to. Okay. Does anyone not have a liberty rating yet? Is anyone feeling left out? All right. Speak now. Uh, call up uh, Sylvan Yakov. Sylvan, are you here? I saw you earlier. There you are. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Sylvan. Uh, me and my wife are a liberty activist in uh, Manchester, and um, Marav has many knows her. Uh, and I wanted to give a small token of our appreciation to the unsung heroes among us. Um, in economics, we talk about the seen and the unseen. The sacrifice of a legis legislator is obvious. What is less obvious is the sacrifice of the legis legislators 
significant, significant other. The support goes hand in hand with our liberty legislator in defending freedom. Those people behind the scene and non acknowledged are the true bedrock of the revolution. Sorry. We want you to know that we see you and we appreciate you. We know that without your quiet strength, we are trying to build together here in New Hampshire would be impossible. So thank you. Uh, we have a list of people that have a gift uh, from us. And uh, uh, so uh, oh, we ask uh, Brian Seward, Carol McGuire, Danica. Uh, Daniel McGuire, David Montaki, Elizabeth Edward Apple, Frank Edelbert to stand. Um, Jens McLean, Jens Pillen, Jenny Notter, John Bird, John Reagan. Uh, we have a bunch of people with gifts to give to. And uh, Joseph Hall, Josh Ball, Ken Ammon, Keith Ammon, uh, Keith Murphy, Michael Sylvia, and Tammy Simon, and Victoria Sullivan. Uh, please take this uh, small gift from us. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. Are you the wife, husband, significant other of a legislator? Please, we have something for you. Right there. A little gifts. As we know, understand the sacrifices you guys make. Thank you. Could we please have a moment of silence for Shem Kala? I think uh, many of us knew Shem um, in different ways. Some of us knew Shem uh, as a volunteer who spent countless hours tirelessly working across the state uh, for campaigns and causes he believed in, rain or shine or snow. Um, I met him first in Manchester at a sine wave. I think many of us not myself, but many of you know him as a colleague. He was elected in 2014 uh, to the New Hampshire State Legislature. And I remember when I was handing, in 2015, I was handing out the gold standard one week, and I knew him to have been camping for the last week up in northern New Hampshire. And I was surprised to see him show up right on time in a suit and tie, uh, ready to go for the legislative session that day. That kind of commitment is one of the reasons that he was one of seven legislators last year to, in 2015, to have a perfect uh, voting record. Finally, I think many of us um, knew him as a friend. And personally, I would just like to say that I found him always a, a great person to be around, um, consistently positive, and completely dedicated. Uh, to what he believed in. So the NHLA would like to uh, recognize his achievements with a Life Death Activ Activism Award, and I'd like to invite Carla Mora up to accept the award. Um, <laughs>